Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, my name is Justin. Uh, my call is Kilo Oscar for Charlie Echo Quebec. And in this next video of the FL to G series, we're going to be going over the graphical user interface. In the last video, uh, we covered the configuration. So if you're not caught up on that, now's probably a pretty good time to go back and watch that first little 10 minute video. This is meant to be a basic tutorial to help you get a better grasp or understanding of the layout and functions of what you see here uh, before you in FL Digi. I know it can be kind of intimidating, but it's really not as bad as it may look. So we're gonna go ahead and just jump in and get started with the frequency counter up top in the top left corner. Clearly, it's pretty self-explanatory. This should match the frequency that is on your radio. This, um, this drop-down box right here will depending on the rig that you have it connected to, I currently have mine connected to an ICOM 7300, will reflect the current mode of, um, the mode of operation that you are, you are in. So my rig likes to see this as packet USB. On the radio it shows up as USB digital. It doesn't really matter as long as the, uh, the radio communicates with the uh, software just fine. To the right here, for some reason it's grayed out with my rig, but I know on other rigs I've had, like the ICOM uh, 7100 and my Yesu FT891, you have a drop down box here. This number will reflect the width, your bandwidth that you can see. I like to have mine for digital operations spread out as far as it can, and typically that's roughly either 3000 or 3600 hertz. And that gets re uh, represented down here by a scrolling blue screen on the waterfall, which uh, we'll, we'll go over a little bit later. You can narrow filters if you experience any QRM down the road, but as far as a starting point, I like to have a nice uh, wide bandwidth to receive those signals from. To the right here, we have logging data for the purposes of nets and for the purposes of nets and checking in and uh, normal usage, I've never really used this. I basically just ignore this. Moving over to the top right, we have three buttons. There's the uh, RXID, TXID, and Tune. The way FL Digi works is if you have the TXID enabled, as I do right now, if we were all on a net and we were all on the same frequency, and I transmitted, if I have the TXID enabled, I will transmit a signal that will allow anybody who is on the same frequency with the RXID button checked to receive that signal and adjust to the proper mode that I am transmitting in. We'll get to modes here in a little bit, but the long and short of it is if you typically are uh, uh, participating in a net, you would want to have TXID disabled. It's always a good idea to have RXID on uh, with certain exceptions. If you're just uh, if you're just communicating in a regular QSO, uh, QSO, you can go ahead and have TXID enabled and it's not really going to make too much of a difference if everybody's on the same page. If you are net control, you would want to have TXID enabled. And that pretty much sums it up. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. The next button's tune, again, fairly self-explanatory. This tan beige panel is the receive pane. Any data that you receive or any signals that are decoded will be put up as text in this receive pane. The blue pane right below it is the transmit pane. This is where you would type in anything that you would need to transmit before hitting send, and we'll go ahead and discuss uh, sending and other functions. Uh, may maybe this video if we get around to it, but it may be a, a later video. Over to the bottom right, we're going to go ahead and jump down here. You see these two vertical columns. You have one white column and one gray column with a slider in it. This is probably one of the biggest things you need to pay attention to whenever you are communicating. On the, the right, the right uh, column is the slider bar for your squelch. The left white bar is the signal received 
Um, so as you receive a signal, let's see here. We've got a signal right here at 1500 hertz. We'll see if we can, if it'll raise up a little. Uh, you can see kind of a little uh, green signal there. I, I'm pr pretty sure that I'm in the wrong mode. Uh, let's see if we can grab something a little bit narrower. I doubt it's going to be the right one, but it may be close enough. There we go. So pretty sure I'm not in the right mode. Doesn't look like I'm, I am, but this gives a good, represent, uh, good representation of what we're looking at. You'll see that green bar jump up and down uh, according to the amount of signal that you are in. Now, if you're in the right mode, if I was in the right mode that this person's transmitting in, it would basically be a steady, consistent level where that green bar is at. The slider here is a squelch. You want to make sure that the slider is set below the green bar when you want to decode text, but above the green bar when you don't want to decode text. For instance, you have QRM or you have atmospheric noise or the mode that you're operating is, is very sensitive. You want to sometimes set that slider up a little bit high, but you also want to keep an eye on it because we've all been in, uh, in that it We've all had that experience where we're in the middle of a QSO and all of a sudden the signal just fades. That can happen and that can happen here as well. And if your slider is set just below where that green bar uh, is and that signal kind of fades out, you can just go ahead and s it can stop decoding because the signal has then dropped below the squelch. Keep an eye on that. To enable the squelch, you're going to go ahead and click on the uh, click on the SQL button here, and typically it'll be yellow when it's not decoding anything. To turn it off, you just click it, it'll go, it'll, uh, the little square to the left will gray out. I typically leave it on. AFC, it stands for Automatic Frequency Control. I typically leave that off always. In this mode that I'm currently in, it does not have that as an option. However, there are some modes, uh, something like the MFSK modes, will have that. And what that will tend to do is have the frequency that, uh, that your rig is listening in or your, your FL Digi is listening to. It will adjust the offset by a couple of hertz here and there, and it will float to try and keep where, what it thinks is a signal. I find this to be more of a problem than it is worth. I always leave it off. If everybody's transmitting on the same offset, you should be good to go, and there should be no reason to have that uh, have that uh, frequency counter floating. To the left of that, this green diamond here, is your audio input. You want to make sure that your audio levels for your rig and your computer system are set so that you're not overdriving the audio for the software. If you're overdriving the audio for the software, it'll be red or black. You want, you want it to be green virtually all the time. To the left of that, this number right here where it says negative three, is your transmit uh, attenuator. You want to use this to try and get your ALC to the sweet spot. Depending, depending on what rig you have, that could be a different different numbers. I've got currently got mine set to negative three. Depending on the frequency that I'm operating at, I like to check my ALC on my 7300 and adjust this as necessary. You can do tenths of a decibel by clicking the single arrow and the double arrow will bring it one whole decibel. Let me return that back to three and we'll continue on. So we're going to go ahead and jump over to the waterfall display. Now you can see this waterfall display goes about to 3,500 because I've got this uh, got this software in full screen mode. The rig is only picking up to 3,000 hertz, and this is the offset. To locate a signal, if you see a signal that is uh, that you want to try and decode, you'll go ahead and just put your cursor over it to the best of your ability and say, "We see." a signal at 1000 hertz offset. We're just going to go ahead and click. And we got close enough there, but we're at 986. 
So we can see that our offset is not exactly at the 1000 we want it to be. So we're just going to go ahead and bump it up here by using these arrows. So the double arrow will bring it up 10 hertz and then the single arrow will bring it up another four hertz by clicking it four times. One, two, three, four. So again, now we're centered on 1000 hertz. When you're on the frequency that you want, the actual offset that you want, and you, you're, you're worried that you might click off somewhere and, and, and lose any data, you can go ahead and click on the lock, and that will lock your transmit frequency to to the uh, to that 1,000 hertz or whatever hertz you offset you selected at. And that allows you to listen to other offsets and still when you transmit will transmit on the offset that you locked it to. QSY will adjust your rig to the off to center the offset within the within. Um, within the bandwidth that you have set. So currently I have set at, I'm currently set at 1000. If I click QSY, it will set, it will uh, shift the radio so that my 1000 offset is now sitting at 1500 right in the middle of the bandwidth. And that helps for if you're trying to use narrow filters. If you've got a lot of signal on, you know, uh, above or below that frequency and you want to tune it out and you want to tighten the filters, I know my ICOM 7100 my filters won't necessarily, I can't cancel out everything above 1000. It'll, it'll cut down to about 1500. Let's go ahead and demonstrate that here. So I can bring my filter in, but I can't go any lower than that. I can bring the bottom side up and filter out the bottom side, but that leaves me with a predicament. If I only want to, if I only want to, uh, uh, if I have something that's just above my 1000 Hertz, that I need to cancel out, uh, I can't really get there effectively. So I'll go ahead and reset my uh, uh, passband filter. And I'll hit this QSY button and that will go ahead and allow me to center the signal at 1500 right there in the middle. And then I can adjust my filter so that I'm exactly where I need to be and I can filter out everything around. And I just did that by setting the filter on my rig, which I have preset to uh, filter three is the tightest filter. So I'll go ahead and bring it back to filter one, which is my widest filter, and we'll continue on. The green bar below is just your, uh, I believe it's your audio input, completely irrelevant to what we're, uh, to what we, uh, what I use it for. I basically just ignore this. Moving over to the left are your, up top here, are your uh, waterfall controls. And these controls here are all aesthetic. It just applies to how you'll set the personally to what you prefer the waterfall to look like. I kind of like having mine a little bit brighter, so even though the noise is a little bit further down, I can still see any, any signals that are still uh, down there, perhaps deep in the noise. And you can just adjust that by clicking the arrows on the right. I think this, uh, this uh, uh, left value only goes to zero. I typically ca keep it at about six or eight. The right value is it's around 60. To the right of that, you've just got a waterfall zoom. It allows you to zoom in a little bit more on the waterfall or zoom out. And then you've got the scroll speed of the waterfall. I typically have that on fast. And then you can shift up and down as, uh, as necessary. You could probably do that a little bit better with a, with a better zoom. Down in the bottom left, you have your mode that you're currently operating in. So right now, I'm currently in MFSK 11. To the right, I have the signal to noise ratio, the signal to noise ratio that I currently have in in the software that the software is, is somewhat decoding. So right now I'm, I'm receiving a signal noise ratio of negative 15 dB. That will change depending on the mode that you're in. Um, these couple of, of, of boxes right here. Now we're going to talk about the modes. When you're within a uh, certain mode, you can switch within the different bandwidths of that mode 
simply by coming down here to the bottom left and clicking and left clicking. Now you can go ahead and select the different bandwidths which can be uh, best suited for different propagation conditions. Now to change the overall mode, FL Digi has a few dozen modes that you can operate in. You'll just simply go up to the op mode and pick from whatever your desired operating mode will be. And it has everything, uh, RIDI, PSK, Olivia. I personally am a fan of Contestia. I like the Contestia 4250. As far as uh, the macros that we're sitting right here, these are this top row is associated with your function with your function keys. So F1 through F12 will pull each one of these. And it's simple. All you need to do is left click on a macro in order to uh, send, in this case, an RSID CQ. So I'll just go ahead and send that now. Now, if you notice down here, this TR button has now lit up, indicating that the software is transmitting. Occasionally, the software may get hung up. And you can see right here, this uh, this is the indicator that sends the software back into receive mode. And if I were to get rid of that or delete it or put my cursor here, uh, uh, before it, what will happen is the software will transmit through the rig and it will just transmit blank characters. And I'm still transmitting here and I can tie up the frequency. If that happens, you can always just come down here to this bottom right and click the transmit receive toggle button and your rig will then go ahead and stop transmitting. Let me see here. Is there anything else I forgot? These macros can be adjusted by right clicking on a macro and you can open up the, uh, the macro editor. You have the list of commands here along the right. Frequency, mode, uh, my call, and these things right here will pull from, your from the information you plugged in in the station configuration. Down here you have the you know, call name, QTH, all this stuff. You can also put in, um, uh, you can use some pretty nifty tools here. You've got all this. Now in order to send one of these commands over to the macro text, you will just simply click one and click the left arrow that's above the select tag and it will transfer that. And that will allow you to type in whatever you need to. Then down here at the bottom, you can uh, label your macro, test macro, and we will hit apply and you'll see that macro has been populated to the button. And to just delete it, you'll go through and just delete everything, hit apply, and then close. That basically covers this up. I'll go ahead and save the transmit and uh, the transmitting and, and, and QSO, uh, QSO uh, video for another time. And I hope you've uh, gained some knowledge. I hope this has helped you out. And if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. Again, my name is Justin, Kilo Oscar 4, Charlie, Echo, Quebec. I appreciate taking the time to watch this video. Hope it helped you out. Have a great day. 73.